Thank you for tuning in to Ungentrify with Kent Johnson. Ungentrify takes an unfiltered view on pop culture, music, television and film, politics, current events, and topics central to the worldwide Black community. Ungentrified is a safe audio space for celebrating Black culture in its purest form. What's up, good people? Uh, thank you for tuning in. Welcome back to a very special episode of Gentrified. Uh, before we get started, I do want to take a moment to shout out everyone who is protesting and standing up for what they believe in. Uh, these past few weeks have been nothing short of crazy, but um, you know, don't feel like your voice isn't being heard. We're definitely hearing you, and uh, we are on the side of change. We've always been a place where Black Lives Matter that ain't never changed. So uh, shout out to you guys for putting yourselves out there to to make a difference. Um, With that being said, we are taking uh, down episode eight of season four of Insecure, which was low-key happy. Uh, and man, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Look, I'm acting like I'm talking to myself. Hey. It's okay. <laughs> you just forgot all about me. It's I cool. forgot all about you. I'm sorry. Uh, of course I have B with me. <laughs> hey everybody. I am here. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> and, um, yeah, let, let, let's go ahead and, and get into it. Um, so, <sighs> It was a very timely episode because I feel like we definitely needed uh, a or reprieve, pick me up. <laughs> yeah, from all yeah. of the stuff that's been going on. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, and man, what a beautiful episode! Just like visually, uh, it was amazing. And shout out to Natasha Rothwell for for writing. Uh, she did her damn thing. Aww. As well, mm-hmm. um, I was smiling. I had like a legit smile on my face for most of the episode. So I was so glad to be taking a break and and immersing myself into like one of my favorite shows. So yeah, yes, shout out. <laughs> yes. And it definitely felt immersive. I think that was a perfect word because it felt like uh, everything just kind of blurred uh, around me as I was watching, and it felt like it felt like the episode was longer than normal but not like drawn out it felt no it it felt perfect it felt like a perfect episode (laughs) it kind of reminded me of like those 90 movies like um the ethan hawk movie before sunrise where like everything happens all over like a a full-fledged love or you know long discussion deep Mm -hmm. thoughts all happen in one night and i just felt like it totally took me back and i was like oh I, i love this i love like things that happen all in one day type of thing. <laughs> right. And it and it definitely uh speaks to that. I think I forget if it was Issa or Prentice Penny who had spoken on that about how um they were inspired by those movies. You know, was it Before Sunrise, Before Sunset? I forget the other one. Um Yeah, the third that, one wasn't as good. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but that that kind of um you know, kind of capsule episode situation where everything happens in in one sitting. Um, So it it definitely reminded me of that too. Oh, it was before midnight. So before sunrise, before before midnight, midnight and before sunset. Um, So this definitely felt, like you said, it felt like uh, it was definitely inspired by that. And I remember that is definitely a piece of the 90s. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Ethan Hawke all by himself is a piece of the 90s. (laughs) Yes, I I I don't know why. I mean, I guess now knowing that they were inspired, it, I just felt it like the whole time I was watching it and just like how it kind of goes into like these deep conversations where you're being exposed and you're being honest and you know in those movies it's because you don't you know this you don't know this person, you're trying to get to know this person, so your walls are down and you're 
just, you know, being open and who knows if you're ever going to see each other again. So you just kind of like living in the moment. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, you could totally feel that with them, like, you know, low key happy. They were both kind of feeling like they're both happy in where they are in life. And so they had those walls down and were able to just be themselves, take me, take me, leave me. And who knows what's going to happen after tonight. Right. And, and they are new people. So if you think yeah. about the the Lawrence and Issa that we met at the beginning of the series and the Lawrence <laughs> and Issa that uh, were a certain type of person when they separated versus who they are now, they are new people. So it does ring true what you said about, you know, getting to discover somebody new. And one of the, the earlier lines that Issa throws out is, let the record show that I've changed. Like, so that kind of <laughs> sets the tone for... Uh, how they navigate through this episode, but man, um, it, yeah, it was definitely a couple of moments where it felt like the room just kind of sucked away, especially, and they played around with that too. Like when they were sitting down at dinner and like the sound muted and it uh-huh. focused in tightly on too. them. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and it like the tonal shifts in and how things happen too. But yeah, it was it did that thing. But let's let's go ahead and, <laughs> and work our way through it. So they they link up for for drinks, uh, and the the venue that they choose to do so, the restaurant that they at pro- proves to be <laughs> a terrible place to do so because it's <laughs> right after a Lizzo concert. Uh, so that that's not a a, a space that's going to be a quiet um, vibe. No, if the Lizzo concert just popped off, right? That's the after spot, like not a not a like oh let's a reconnect spot. And he looked so nervous too, like it was the first date. Like (laughs) he was kind of like, oh let me get myself ready. He had the drinks ready, so it was kind of like a first date for him. And and then it it went south a little bit, (laughs) (laughs) not because of him, but just in general. (laughs) Right, right. Um. And he he lets us and kind of know what we already knew from the last episode that he had been in San Francisco, uh, interviewing, looking for new opportunities, and uh, they used that time to kind of catch up and to say you know what went on with the block party and and uh, getting Issa's kind of take on uh, <laughs> feeling like it almost killed her but she did it so like <laughs> emerging from from that and. You know, Lawrence letting it be known that he's looking at other opportunities and and which really... it, we still don't know if he got got laid off right. or if he's being proactive. We don't know. So he and he kind of kept it open this whole episode, like he's looking, like he doesn't know what's going to happen next. So mm-hmm. I mean, he could be going to San Francisco. He could be staying. So so we still don't know yet. Right, right, absolutely. So. Um, as as we mentioned, it was the Lizzo after party, so it was too loud in there. <laughs> they end up um, going to another spot. But wait, can we just um, touch on the fact that Issa busted her ass when she <laughs> came in? Like she was looking so fly, and was like, "Oh, hey, there he is!" and started to make her strut across and ate it so hard. He was like, "Are you okay?" And she was like, "I need a minute." <laughs> as as she was roadkill, as people walked over her, right. <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. Sorry, but it, it definitely eased him. Mean, you know, I think in the last, I think in this season, really, they have played up to Lawrence's kind of goofiness more. Because um, think when we met him, as he discussed this, like, uh, right, he was depressed. <laughs> he was going through it, so we really didn't get to see his personality like that. And then when he became mm-hmm. <clears throat> single, Lawrence, we saw him being like this suave kind of smooth guy who was running through women like it was nothing. Uh-huh. Um, we didn't really get to see him be himself. We saw him be what he thought he was supposed to be, uh, being single. So in the mm-hmm. really towards the end of the third season, but definitely in the fourth season, we've seen his goofiness and his nerdiness kind of uh, emerge in, in being comfortable with, with it too. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, we've, we hadn't had a lot of opportunities to see he and Issa have fun with each other. Uh, I think this is, I mean, we talked about this earlier. I think this is the longest Lawrence has been on screen uh, for an episode. <laughs> yeah. 
uh, as well. Yeah, it was so. good to see it, though. I was happy to see him. You know, I've been kind of back and forth on Lawrence, which is maybe because of all the things that you just said, right? Like he was going through his own, you know, he was navigating through his life and I was kind of like navigating through his character, wasn't really feeling him. Um, but now I'm back on board. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we never got to see them be like a happy couple or anything like that. So uh, I think that was also too why everybody was very googly eyes about this episode because we wanted to, if they were together for five years, there had to be some good moments. So we, we wanted to see what that actually looked like. Um, so we, we got that this episode. But they they head out from the, the bar that they were at and they go to a restaurant that was on their list as a couple. <laughs> uh, it was, was, oh yeah, we'll get there. You know, we'll, we'll do, we'll hit that up. Um, mm-hmm. And come to find out that Issa had went <laughs> after they broke up. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of like, have I, have I ever done that? Where like, there were things that I wanted to I do. I definitely did. While I was in the relationship, <laughs> it was like, well, fuck it. They, look, they ain't around now. Um, but I don't, I didn't look at it like that. It, I looked at it like, I, I, why not? Like, I'm just going to go. I'm not going to wait for this person. And not only did she go, she was well versed with the menu <laughs> and knew the, uh, the best choices to have. So uh, on their way there, they hop into a lift and... Uh, instead of the quiet ride that they requested, they got uh, a driver who was very uh, involved <laughs> in, <talking> right, <laughs> in their situation. Um, and in conversation, it comes out that Lawrence had bought an engagement ring for, for Issa. Oh, well, I don't think it was officially confirmed. Because he, he kind of joked that it moment. off. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was just kind of like, well, I did buy a ring. You know, like it, we were kind of all, we all made the Easter face though. Like the face that she made, which was like, you did? Right. But um, but he, you know, it was all kind of like back and forth joking with the lady because cause Issa was being rude to her <laughs> and trying to tell her to be quiet. And he was trying to like engage her just to be nice. So we didn't really know how to take it yet. Right. <laughs> and she did that tone that we all do when we trying to tell somebody to shut up. But not <laughs> yeah. tell them to shut up. Like, like the one you just gave Zara. <laughs> like, right. Mm, okay, Zara. <laughs> <laughs> that no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Mm. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> Ethan was kind of like, I told you we wanted to be quiet. And and Lawrence was trying to engage the, the nice old lady who had mints and waters. And, you know, she was just giving him the full treatment. Right. You know, I was actually surprised that that wasn't another, like, um, black actress that we knew it felt like it would have been perfect for i know i was waiting for her to turn around and so i could see who it was yeah and it nope, didn't, it didn't happen it didn't give it to us nope. uh nope. <laughs> um but they finally get to the restaurant and they have this agreement that like they're gonna be open about everything that they bring up in conversations it's a no eggshells kind of situation like we're gonna be honest brutally honest and, and and go from there. And mm-hmm. at this point, Issa's kind of picking at him because he told her when he invited her out that, hey, I have something I want to talk about. And he's being, uh, he's tiptoeing around bringing it up. So I think she mm-hmm. hits him like three times like, so let's talk about what, what did you want to talk about? <laughs> right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she was like, are you dying? <laughs> oh, yeah, because remember, she asked, she was like, are you dying because you are skinny? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so he was being very coy about what it was. Um, And then finally, when they sit down at the restaurant, uh, he tells her that he's been thinking about us, you know, quote unquote. And what would have happened if they had stayed together? So Condola's question has been lingering in his mind since she posed it to him during Friendsgiving. So it's been, Mm -hmm. what, four months at this point? Three, four months? That's been yeah. on his mind. We don't know anymore, right? Like, we don't know the timeline at all at this point, do we? Right. Uh, I'm I'm assuming it's February-ish. Uh, because, so we had the... The, the block festival. party was January. Right. It was January, January 25th, if I remember right. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, yeah, it was January 25th. So the next day, we saw her go to Paint and Sith. Then the following So that was only a one-day episode, too. Right. And then... 
we don't know where in the timeline Molly's vacation is in reference to the Lawrence and Issa situation, but it's either right. very end of January or beginning of February, somewhere around mm-hmm. there. Uh, yeah, yeah. Or, or hell, it could be later. Who knows? Um, Who knows? Yeah. Right. But it's after <laughs> January 25th. We do know that. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's and been... definitely at, way after that conversation because that was Thanksgiving. So yeah, that was two months. So, ago. Yeah, about four. Yeah, about about three four months. So yeah. Yeah. yeah so anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he Sorry. says you know what would have happened if we'd been together and the tone of the room completely changes and that's when we see that shift to where like the sound slowly pulls out and the camera tightly comes in on both of them as they're mm-hmm. having this. Very intense conversation. Um, but I enjoyed this conversation. It wasn't like it wasn't like mean and aggressive and finger pointing and just kind of like like you, when you start to think back about like when you broke up, emotions could still even if it's like years and years later, you could still have high emotions about however it ended. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I was glad that even though they were being honest and. And some of it wasn't um, like light fair, you know, some of it was, well, you did this and you did that. It was, it was in a constructive way and it was received in a constructive way and, and like, oh, okay, I didn't, I didn't know that. And um, I'm sorry you felt that way, or I'm sorry you were going through that, you know? So I, I really did like their communication through this whole thing. <laughs> I don't know that I'm, I don't know that I've grown enough <laughs> to have some of those conversations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because look, the, the the questions that came up definitely were questions that came with a little lighter fluid attached to them. <laughs> like they could really <laughs> blow up in your face. Mm-hmm. Um, why Daniel? Right. Ooh. Yeah. Specifically, yeah. <laughs> the why Daniel question. Like that could because he got that D. <laughs> 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 the poor Daniel. Daniel just keeps getting played. He ain't, we ain't seen him in two seasons. <laughs> <laughs> no. He's still getting played. Uh, as well, he the... should be getting played after he uh, did that thing to her. <laughs> <laughs> I won't. I won't bring it up. But it's I'm traumatized. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, even in the first season, season, he was identified as an itch that needed to be scratched. And then in this uh, episode, it's kind of like, well, he was around. Like, dang, he complimented me, right? Yeah. Daniel ain't do nothing but but be himself and be <laughs> nice, and he don't deserve this. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, they they were very vulnerable in this moment. Um, and like mm-hmm. I said, I, let me take a step back. Uh, you mentioned communication being a thing. I think that's just been an overall theme this season. Like everybody has been discovering how they don't communicate effectively, right? Mm, that's uh, good and point. I, and I, I definitely think that this is the conversation that leads. Issa to do what she does in the next episode um, mm-hmm. because in in Lawrence and, and her talking they it comes out that Lawrence was depressed you know he was really at his wits end thinking about moving back home um, I know Aww. so like you know that having that conversation with yourself is is a depressing <laughs> moment like the when you feel like you can't do nothing else and that you are such a inhibitor to the person you're in a relationship with that you're just gonna leave uh that's a low point um so yeah he definitely let it out that he was just not himself um but he didn't express that to her right i like to think that you know women typically not to like gender stereotype by any means but i think women just tend to be more vocal more I, i mean obviously in this episode we saw that Issa held a lot of stuff in, at least from him, right? She probably told Molly, I'm not going home. I don't want to be around him. But communicating to to him, she still held some stuff in. But I just think in general, women tend to communicate, even if it's angry. She probably popped off on him a few times about things that he wasn't doing right or how she felt about things. But men typically hold things in. And a lot of times we don't um, know how, you know, what's going on in, in your minds or not necessarily like in a dating type of way, but just how you were handling emotional type things, especially in like the black community where, you know, a lot of times you're taught to like hold, you know, and I, I don't want to speak for you by any means, but like to hold things in, like hold in your emotions, like you can't cry, you got to be strong. And, you know, a lot of times 
um, we don't even ask you guys how, you know, what's your temperature? Like, how are you feeling? You know, do you want to talk about things? And even if we did, that doesn't mean that you necessarily would feel comfortable to like then express those things. Right. Right. And I'm, I'm assuming this is a complete assumption that Issa felt like her actions were speaking to it. Uh, because these are things that he should have picked up on. He should have picked up on the fact that I come home late now all of a sudden, or he should have picked up on mm-hmm. these things. And he was so uh, centered in his own bubble of depression that he wouldn't have been able to see the cues anyway because he had some some things to figure out. So, um, mm-hmm. and, and this is not the stereotype either, uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's not even women. But we are. <laughs> P- people do this, period. Like, well, you know, I slammed the plate down, so he should have known that I was mad. <laughs> or uh, I didn't pick up his favorite ice cream when I went to the store. He should have known something was wrong. He should have talked to me. Like, you know, uh, this is the kind of stuff that people do uh, as a passive aggressive way. Are you of trying expressing. to say me? Have I done that to you? Because it sounds like when you say people, you mean me. <laughs> no, I did not say. I said people, and I'm leaving it at people. Um, I have done it, so I, oh well. <laughs> but you know that this is what people do to express themselves and see that as a, a form of communication when it's not the most ideal uh, way. Uh, I, of course, saying it. Uh, directly to the person is the best way, but this is not what was happening between them two. And uh, and we don't know how it would have been received though either. Right. Right. Like, so this is to hindsight of 2020. And so in the moment, even though he was feeling these things, if she would have, you know, come at him a certain way, he could have popped off or he could have been like, bunk this, I'm leaving. And mm-hmm. you know, whatever, whatever happened then. I mean, I'm glad they're talking about it now because, everything has a place. And so maybe it just, you know, obviously maybe it just wasn't the right time back then. Right. Right. And, <clears throat> and they ended that very intense kind of moment. Uh, Cause it, it, it fell out of being a date. Like it started off as a date. <laughs> they were having a good time. Then it, it went into <laughs> like therapy session. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was a roller coaster for sure. I was like, wait, what, wait, what are we doing now? Especially because, I, and I don't know if we're there yet, you know, he's also getting text messages from uh, Condola. And I'm like, wait, so this isn't about Issa? Is it about just finding out more about yourself? Is it, um, you know, because I thought they were rekindling. I thought, at first I just thought it was like a meetup. Like, a, oh, hey, I just wanted to do a temperature check. Then it kind of got romantic. Then it kind of got, like you said, therapy. Then it Then it kind of was like, is it just therapy for you? Because why is he talking to her? Is he now going to go meet up with her and try to be with her? Like, I was like on a roller coaster this whole thing. (laughs) But I was here for it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it it, it was definitely a lot of uh, ups and downs. But it it eventually made its way back to being a date now. uh, (laughs) Because she brought up the, you know, the fact that, hey, you know, we're different people now. So Mm -hmm. uh, we're good. We're in a better space. And... Uh, glad that we could have this conversation about it. And then he hit her with the, I forget what she said, but he hit her with the, oh, yeah? And and I know that, yeah. We all know that, yeah. That, yeah, is uh, I'm down for whatever uh, mm-hmm. comes. Uh, Let me take them drugs. No, I'm just fine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when he said it, it, I had, like, flashbacks of every time I've <laughs> thrown that, yeah, out to somebody. Because I was like, I threw that out with the intention of, it, everything is yeah. It's the the year. Yes, it's all going down. What, whatever you want to do, I'm with it. Like let's yeah, go. Yes. <laughs> uh, when he said that, yeah, I I did like a little a little schoolgirl kind of like smile, like Ooh, oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like they gonna do it tonight. <laughs> and the other thing, I don't know if you picked up on this, but twice in the episode, Issa hit him with the. <laughs> I hate you. And I was like, oh, that, that's, <laughs> that's the compliment to the yeah. When, when, yeah, no. when women do the I hate you and that little giggle, the, the, all that like draws is off. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it definitely transitioned back to a whole date. But like you said, <laughs> Condola, every time they get somewhere, some progress, Condola, here come Condola popping up with a text message, a phone call, a, an interruption. Um, and yeah. at first he's kind of withdrawn about it, but he does, 
uh, offer up that information to Issa. Like, yeah, we've been talking. Um, well, cause didn't she see it? Like, she yeah, she saw it. <laughs> yeah, because that was my other thing. Is like, I was waiting for him to then say, like, whether or not he, because they were having such a good time. I was thinking that he was gonna be like you know what, I'm not going to be able to make it or, you know, something came up and we're going to have to reschedule or something. But he was still entertaining that I'm going to check in with you in a little while. So I was kind of like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> so, yeah, when he was like, yeah, he was kind of like, oh, yeah, we've kind of been chatting. I was still kind of like, well, maybe this is not serious. He's just trying to like, he's trying to do that thing where some people like try to go back in time and find out about all their past relationships and why they didn't work out so that they could get with the next right, person so be for real ready, or something. Be the best <laughs> person for the next person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I thought was going on, but I was so annoyed that he just kind of like kept extend extending, like kind of pushing her back. Like, Oh yeah, we still meeting as opposed to like living in the moment with Issa. Like, Oh no, this is where I'm at for the night. Right. But is so that I was kind of mad about that. Isn't mm-hmm. that him being realistic too? Like I don't know where this is going to go. Uh, so let no, me. No, but keep it shows your intentions. Open. No, see, that's what I'm talking about. It shows your intentions. So your intentions are I'm gonna go with where whatever's open is open. Versus like I'm here in this moment with you. I'm going to focus my attention on you, and I can be in that mindset to deal with her at another time. Versus like. I mean, we, I'm, let me just do what I came to do and then I'm going to go do the other thing that I wanted to do. You know what I mean? Like, it's hard to, when you have plans after your plans, <laughs> that kind of like negates the first plans. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. That's I, me I, on a date. Like, if, if someone told me <laughs> Well, he's not on a date. You got to remember that. This is not a date. We are looking at it <laughs> as a date. It, but you just said it feels like a date. And it, when he did the, oh yeah, he should have been planning for the after date. <laughs> It functions like a date, but hey, we're all new people here. I don't know if new Issa going to give me them draws or not. <laughs> uh, that I hate you said, yes, these draws. Is, I'm not even wearing draws. <laughs> and then uh, there was another line that was brought up that was kind of like, oh, okay. And it was the, uh, I like you like this. So, um. You know, that yeah. like accepting the new person and whoever that is and, and realizing that they these are not the people who they left uh, you know, a year or two ago during a breakup. So um mm-hmm. but yeah, it's 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 very hot and cold. They they keep going <laughs> back and forth. Like things seem to be going on a a great road and then you have a derailment. And we see that when they, they extend the date or whatever it is. Uh, so after the restaurant, they don't want the night to end. They want to keep going. Mm-hmm. Right? So Well, I think TSA <laughs> Bay kind of uh, helped to push that along, right? Right. So, because they, they were kind of like about to say goodbye. They were trying to figure out like, how's this going to end? Like, this, is it a handshake, a hug, or more? Or, and then TSA Bay <laughs> <laughs> rolled up. I'm not going to do the sound that he did. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh, that was so funny. And then, and put her on blast as she had been there before and that, you know, they it seemed like they had been there together and mm-hmm. and, and the girlfriend, the girl he was with, he was just like, yeah, this was my jump off. Not jump off. He didn't use that term. What did he call her? <laughs> Uh, he said I was like dealing with her. Or he said something we got it like in. That. We used to get it. In. <laughs> yeah, he's, don't like jump off. Okay, I was close to the first. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and I thought that was that was awfully honest because <laughs> mm-hmm. they were trying to figure out like how do we describe what we did. Oh, we yeah, we was just having sex <laughs> <laughs> in front of because he doesn't know who Lawrence is and and she doesn't know who this girl is, but. I don't know. That felt awkward. <laughs> it felt awkward, but they made it fun. Right. Say that. <laughs> right. They definitely did. Um, and like you said, it, it, it felt like it was kind of up in the air. But I, I think that they definitely were kind of like, I, yeah. I mean, if it has to end right here, I mean, if you say it's done, then I'm going to say it's done. But if you say it's not mm-hmm. done, then we can keep going. Um, <laughs> then... Uh, so they, in they, which he tried to play her, and right. he was like, "Oh no, I got things to do," and went around the corner. And she was like, "She was like, like if somebody had just told her no, and she was like all in motion, and she was like, oh, I guess, 
I guess I'll go home then. <laughs> right. Well, damn. Right. <laughs> yeah. I felt bad. I was like, oh. Because then he, that was like a long joke that he was in for the long game. Because <laughs> I thought he was really gone. <laughs> I was like, how is this going to gonna end? But um, but then he came back around joking and kept it light. And and then they moved on to the next thing. Right. So the date went on to level three. Uh, and they went to uh, the art block. So they're walking through. Um, and like I said, it, we see them having like these hot and cold moments and then it's visually displayed on the screen, uh, when they stand, this is another gorgeous shot and they're both, uh, in front of these neon lights. And one of them is Lawrence is under the red, uh, lights and East is under the blue lights. And that was right at the moment where, uh, you can see another kind of small shift change where Issa went cold, uh, based off of what Lawrence had said about uh, Condola and the fact that they've been talking. And uh, now it was in his kind of court to bring it back to where they were both uh, at an even temperature for this situation. But uh, mm -hmm. they they have a little art walk experience. Uh, he buys some art and they head home and they realize that they both live near each other now. Uh, in the same neighborhood, but they catch the lift. They on their way back home, and it, they go to Lawrence's house because they talk about how they she wants to see his new spot and the fact that he lives so close and she's never seen it was surprising to her. But we all know that that was also a dry, <laughs> a dry beg, a dry invite uh, yeah. to, to come to that house. Um, and then she took it even further with the. Can I use your bathroom? <laughs> when no, she wait, got he invited her up, but he invited her up though. He invited so it her wasn't up. Like to he see was the... like begging to come in. To he see was, the he house. Was like, she was like, oh, okay, well, now I know where you live. And he was like, well, you know what? I want you to come up so you can see. Because she was like, where are you going to hang that over? It was like something like over your old air mattress or something <laughs> like that. And he was like, no, I need you to see how I've elevated. Come on in. And then she, then she got him with the okie doke to the bathroom. <laughs> but I was thinking, I was thinking that she, well, we don't know what she did in the bathroom, but I was thinking that she was going in there after this back and forth with Condola to see if there was like any other stuff in there. Like girls sometimes, not always, but when they're trying to like suss someone out, see if they really done with somebody, they're like, oh, is there an extra toothbrush in here? Is there like a hair tie in here? Because if you deal in, then I'm just gonna move on with myself. Right. But um, we don't know what you do. last check before, yeah. <laughs> before I take off these drawers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I don't want to be surprised when Condola come walking up in here talking about I thought we had a date tonight. <laughs> <laughs> right. On Twitter, someone said that um, they think she went in there and, and did a battle rap with herself to amp herself up for whatever was about to oh, go Oh yeah, down. I think they said I think they said that on the wind down that yeah. they, they she probably had like a like mirror bitch came out just to <laughs> pump her up, <laughs> which I also I believe that probably more. Right. <laughs> um, but we definitely know that that can I use your bathroom is another dry dry big dry invite like <laughs> it's almost like can I have a can I have a cup of water like, right. really with vodka in it because <laughs> it's like wait a minute. Girl, you just told us you live in a neighborhood. That's a two minute ride home. You could have went. You could have held that till you got to your house. And not only that, the lift is outside, still waiting for y'all. Right. Like, you were not just dropped off to be doing whatever you want to do. <laughs> like, right. That, as a matter of fact, when the scene progressed, I was like, "Did somebody go out there and tell the lift to leave?" Because <laughs> he's gonna charge y'all. Yeah. She's definitely right. up in his spot now. And mm -hmm. um, and seeing how grown up he is, because it looks nice in there. That it, is a grown man apartment. <laughs> yeah, it definitely did look nice. And uh, they made a throwback to the green couch, which was mm -hmm. the couch that they bought when they were trying to find like the last semblance <laughs> of a relationship together. Uh, yeah. And he kept it. And I think that's very symbolic in that, too. Um, more than the... Oh shit! I ain't got no money to be buying no new couch. Not that, but in a sense of I like, mean, I think it was probably both. It was a little bit of both because <laughs> he was still poor then. <laughs> but I think it's symbolic in the sense that there was still some hope there. Like I, I haven't completely 
washed myself of you. There's still a reminder of you in in my safe space in my house. So, um, but I also like he's been kind of hinting at that for a while because even after they broke up, he was talking to his boys and was like, "Well, what if I did take her back?" And they was like, "You would be crazy." But it was kind of like for him to even like approach that subject with his friends. Like this was way back, I think, right after he moved out when he was doing his his sleep around Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, and he brought her up and they told, you know, they kind of like shot it down. Then he kind of didn't talk about it anymore. But I felt like even then the fact that right after everything was hot and he was still thinking about her, like there was still a chance. Right. I almost, I really just stopped feeling like there was a chance when Condola came around. Cause I was like, Ooh, like she's real business. Like, and it's (laughs) been a long time for them to have not connected, you know? So, and, and they were like doing their friend thing, you know, they were having a good relationship as friends. So I was kind of like, Oh, did they miss, miss the boat? Right. And Condola definitely kept coming around because even <laughs> uh, here while Issa's in the bathroom, she calling again, like, damn, stop blowing up the man line. But well, you know what? Because he was still giving her hope. Like I was like, send her to voicemail. Why are you, why did you go outside your house? Close the door. Like you was being sneaky to me. That whole thing did not sit right with me. I was actually, I was done at that point And I wanted her to go home. <laughs> I was like the fact that he knew that you were inside and at any point you were going to come out and be like, oh, where's Lauren? Or come out to the, you know, outside the door and see you on the phone like that just felt real shady. I didn't like it. Well, the streets uh, have this theory <laughs> that Condola is <laughs> pregnant. <laughs> Ooh. And that's why she blowing up his line. But to kind of poke a hole in that, they've been talking. So if pregnancy was a thing, I would have hoped they'd had that conversation before today. Um well, she would be, yeah, she would be very pregnant by now. Right. <laughs> she would be four months pregnant by now or three months. Right. But I think that um, just because he said they've been talking, like, I don't know. I know this has been a long time. We're like old, you know, but <laughs> I remember back in the day when I said I was talking to somebody, I was doing more than talking. So, <laughs> um, so we don't know if they really are just text messaging, catching up, like making plans to meet up or the fact that he kept pushing her off. At this point, it has to be like hella late right now. So mm-hmm. the fact that she's still talking about you coming over and he's like, oh, maybe uh, to me sounds like a booty call <laughs> because I'm like, what are you y'all, y'all not really going to be seriously talking at two in the morning? I mean, we don't know what time it is, but like two in the morning i'm i'm thinking that it's not a lot of real uh leveling going on in that it's it's legs open (laughs) (laughs) not for me not for me i i I find that to be who condola might be i don't know (laughs) or you know she could just be annoying as hell and that'd be her thing uh or um, she wasn't returning isa's calls (laughs) right right (laughs) maybe she don't like when she was on the other foot um <laughs> maybe or maybe she thinks maybe he even told her that he was meeting up with Issa and yeah. then she didn't want to let that go cuz remember the last time he had mentioned Issa she was like oh well, I'm staying the night we doing the dang thing tonight so maybe he she feels like he's with her or has met up with her and is blowing her off and she, and that competition is going again Right. That that was uh you and I are we see each other. We on the same page. because <laughs> uh, I was thinking that that too, that like, well, if he's being this honest with Issa, he may very well be taking that same approach with Condola. Cause right now they're kinda in that same space where like we ain't mm-hmm. together no more. We was cool, but we ain't together no more. Um so you know, he may have been very forthcoming about the fact that he was meeting over Issa tonight and she knows in the back of her mind that like the longer uh he ain't here <laughs> is the longer he's with her so and like mm-hmm. you said that competition starts to come into play again i don't know mm-hmm. i hope condola <laughs> is not pregnant um because I, I a i don't like condola like that <laughs> after she pulled like that, that you don't like her at all after she pulled <laughs> that shit on, on turkey day uh, i ain't <laughs> see it for her no more uh so mm-hmm. i i'm not cool with condola um like that and i hate that shows kind of go out like that i don't like it when that's the that's the trope used to then define 
like where the two main characters, the will they, won't they characters, if they're going to be together or not. Right. So I hope that that's not it. Cause that's been used a lot where you think they might get back together and then he fathers a child and it's still kind of like open to dating you, but then you got to somehow be a stepmom all of a sudden, yeah. which I'm not saying there's anything about wrong about being a stepmom or whatever, but I just feel like that's been used too many times. And I either want them to be together clean or not be together right. and be friends. Shout out to Melanie and Derwin of the game. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I mean, I didn't want to name no names, but, but yes. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't want to be like you said. It, it, pregnancy, especially that way, is just always an easy way out and an easy line for a story. And I feel like the writers' room can do better than that. I hope that that's not the avenue that we take. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope that he was just like, look, whoever gonna give it up tonight is gonna be. <laughs> and I options. hope that's not who he is either. <laughs> but but whatever. I mean, you, don't try to take don't try to take Lawrence away from me right now. <laughs> Even though if he goes, it's fine because I have Andrew. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this is a man trying to find his happy. So wherever it's going to be is is that the only be. way he's finding his happy is with his penis <laughs> or cheese. <laughs> well, speaking of happy, so. <laughs> Uh, as the night seems like it has found its end, uh, that there is no more game to play, uh, no more in the cards to play. Uh, Andrew, not Andrew, I'm sorry, Lawrence. <laughs> I got him on your mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Lawrence tells Issa that, hey, you know, tonight really made me happy. And then she hit him with a bomb and was like, no, <laughs> you make me happy and i'm sure everybody you yelled complete and me. right <laughs> at the tv uh when she said that but when she said that i was like oh no draws is definitely being tossed out the window <laughs> it's about to go down condola sorry we'll see you <laughs> at another see you time. Next episode. right next season <laughs> we're putting that do not disturb on it's it's a wrap um no and but that again, that still made me mad because she came out and saw that he had called Condola, right? So then she was like, she was like, all right then, and she was walking for the door, like, all right, I guess, I guess we done. And then she turned around and was like, you know what? I'm gonna shoot my shot. Right, this I'm not it. done. Yeah, I'm not done. Let's 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 see what happens next. And I think it was like again that comp that like you said the competition thing and I just was like oh I she didn't deserve that they they were doing so well and to me that I don't know it felt like she, I felt like she gave up something to then shoot that shot but did she we know that Issa is now very in control or at least feels that she's in control of all of the things that happened to her and she's on this good vibes only kick so her <laughs> having the initiative to step up and be like no i don't want the night to end you make me happy come get this like <laughs> come get this tsunami. <laughs> right? if you look at it all right, when they walked into the apartment they were very separated like they walked in she stood in one place. He stood like they were social distancing. It ain't Corona <laughs> happening, but they were social distancing yeah, in the apartment. Corona, right? <laughs> and they mm-hmm. kept that distance until she came back in, and she made a step towards him uh, to go after what she wanted. You know, this was a very different experience from how we've seen them interact before. Because remember, the last mm-hmm. time they had a very close interaction, it was when they was. He came back and did like the hate fuck <laughs> and like the revenge <laughs> smash. Uh, yeah. And she didn't even get to, you know, have a good time with that. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, she took ownership and kind of led uh, this this race this time. And mm-hmm. and then they raced to the bedroom and they was making love. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, uh, they were. Love. I mean, I, I see what you're saying. If she wouldn't have known, if he wouldn't have like, thrown it to to um condola like if he would have wanted like been in the moment with her then i could see that like she was asking you know she was like going after what she wanted or even if she didn't know that that's what was happening on that like that he was on the phone with condola like i just feel like it's it's a different vibe to me 
that she was in competition with this girl and it it could have just been an organic we move you know like let's keep it going like I know what I want I'm in I'm into you but he never he didn't like give her anything back so I didn't I just wish that he would have given her some kind of inclination that he was on the same page or that he wanted the same thing versus like him still trying to make them plans. Mm -hmm. Um, It just disappointed me, but the the (laughs) love was good. So I guess at the end of the day, everybody wins. (laughs) Except for Condola. Right. Except for Condola. Sorry. And and, and that break baby. (laughs) There's a break baby. Oh, no. (laughs) Um, but yeah, they like they. It was intense. It was looking in the eyes. It was the mm-hmm. the laugh. That slow mo, right? <laughs> and the laugh. To me, when you laugh when you're having sex, that means there's some good sex. So well, unless you're laughing for other reasons. But. <laughs> <laughs> when you're both laughing, <laughs> oh, <laughs> not, yeah, okay. not when there's only one person laughing. When you're both laughing. <laughs> it's good sex. Um, yeah, it's, it's that familiarity. Like, oh, uh, like, like you know what? I miss this. Like, this is. This feels good, right? Like, I in know a what light to do. way, but also a yeah, but also in like a strong like, oh, like we we hitting all the moves together. We in sync. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Which, I, I, there were a lot of moves. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely were a lot of moves. Um, but yeah, they 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 make the love, and uh, mm-hmm. the next morning, uh, she spends the night. The next morning, they wake up and. I think the moment that you were looking for the night before <laughs> when Lawrence was definitely there because he woke up like, hey, so like, what's what's next? What are we doing? And mm-hmm. and to me, I, I, I felt bad for him because I was like, dang, no breakfast, no brunch. Like, this feels like a brunch <laughs> moment. Like, if I didn't wake up and make the, the bacon and eggs for you, we can go around the corner and get the bacon and eggs together. It just felt like mm-hmm. that piece was missing. Um where that Lawrence definitely wanted it. Uh, and Issa was like, no, I'm, I'm going to... We could. Yeah, we could. Like, I... <laughs> thanks, thanks for the good time. You had good money's <laughs> on the night <laughs> there. Right. And that, that definitely uh, gives me that idea that, like, you know, this is very much her owning this moment and making it on her terms. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, she could have taken the lift home, but, you know, she didn't have a walk of shame. She kind of had a... A walk of closure. A prideful. Yeah. <laughs> right. And and when you say closure, that's actually like exactly what I was thinking because it kind of felt like anything could happen now, right? Like it, it was it was so full circle and it was like such a good moment. They had gone through everything that like ev- this could be the last time they see each other or it could be the beginning of something new and more since we don't know if he leaves or not. And she honestly doesn't have like like a, a, like an office or a job that's specific to this location. Like she could take her show on the road and San Francisco is not that far. Even like people at my job commute to San Jose weekly. So, I mean, there's a lot of options. So mm-hmm. I felt like this was like the perfect ending that she was like, nah, you know, like I, I can walk. I don't need a lift. I'm out of here. And they both felt comfortable. They both felt like we did what we needed to do. We said everything we needed to say. And then let's just, it's like a fresh start, whatever happens, fresh start. Right. And, and the way the episode ends, we end with that shot of her walking past this big, like open uh, shot of LA. And it really signifies mm-hmm. that like anything is possible. There's so much room for, you know, things to go a certain way or another way. Um. Mm-hmm. So yeah, this it, would have been a good last episode. Yeah, this, <laughs> like a good season finale. <laughs> it definitely could have been a season finale, but it also rides that that train of like when seasons have a really high peak, uh, right around episode seven or eight, and then they use the last two episodes to kind of close up uh, stuff. So, mm-hmm. um, I feel like we have one more surprise before the end of the season. It better uh, not be the break, baby. <laughs> yeah, please no break, like baby. <laughs> um, but yeah, we definitely are, you know, rounding the final base and and closing up shop. So we have two episodes left, right? Did mm-hmm. you see the previews for next week? I did. I did. Right. So you were right again. 
I'm yes. tired of saying you're right. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> like at first I was like, "Oh my boy, he got this. He's doing so good." Now I'm just kind of like, "Oh, can't. What's happening next?" <laughs> Are you in the writer's room? <laughs> right. shout, shout out to uh, Morgan State University's uh, screenwriting for television and movies program that I am a graduate <laughs> of. Uh, shout out to that department. So um, I think that helps me in my assessment. Foreshadow. Yes, of what's going on. Um, and and how... I thought that us being in high school, being the next Missy and Timbaland was really like the golden age. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, no, sh- okay. shout out to uh, senior year of high school when we were uh, in the advanced English class where we learned about uh, storytelling and and uh, plays and all that stuff. So all of that has led to me being able to... <laughs> to who you are now. <laughs> yes, <laughs> to identify these things. Um, but yeah, so next episode is episode nine, which is titled Loki Trying. And from the preview, we see that this is the moment where Issa and Molly reconnect to kind of have that hash it out moment. And like I said, I'm, I'm feeling like she would be very inspired by the conversation that she and Lawrence just had mm-hmm. uh, and realizing that things could be fixed as long as we don't let it linger for too long. Because that really, there could have been a chance for her and Lawrence that they actually talked about it and not let it go on for so long. So, um, I think well, she's and walking Kelly into said it with that, that to her also. Yeah, Kelly said, "Don't let it fester. Don't let it last too long." Mm-hmm. And I saw people were already upset that Issa was the one who extended the olive branch, but <laughs> you know, I, I think this goes back to what I've been saying about Issa about her being in control of what happens to her. Uh, mm-hmm. So she was like, you know what? No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do this. Let's let's go ahead and figure out what it is, uh, and go from there. Yeah, and on like on that same thought, that doesn't her extending. Is, I don't know if she extended the olive branch or if she just extended the <laughs> meeting invite. <laughs> right. Like, because even in when she was talking to Lawrence at the beginning of that whole thing. And he was like, oh, you know, I ran into Molly. It was really awkward. She was like, probably because we're not friends no more. And he kind of laughed like she was joking. She was like, nah, real real talk. I'm mm-hmm. not friends with her anymore. Like she was dead serious. And so I think like it's the same thing with Lawrence in the sense of this is a meeting to see what's, what's next. So is that is this the end of the friendship or, you know, let's just talk it out and see where we fall. But don't don't think that I don't think that she's going in there to apologize by any means. I think she's going in there to talk it out and and communicate and then see what happens between the two of them versus I was I'm I'm being the the bigger person by inviting you here like in a nasty way or even saying like, you know what, I saw I saw my wrongs. <laughs> Let's I, I apologize. I don't see it either. I think it's like, let's meet up, see where we at, and then we can go from there. Right. I feel like it's that's the... my assessment. <laughs> yeah. It's the um you know the the conversation they have on all reality shows. It's the I brought you here to clear the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Real health vibe style. Right. Yes. I brought you here to clear the air because at the end of the day, you know, like those are the two <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day. <laughs> right. Things that always happen. Uh so this is a clear the air at the end of the day conversation that we're gonna see next week. <laughs> um and Nathan's still around. Um in next week's episode. They didn't show him in the preview, but in the screen cap for the video itself, he's in there. I saw that. Yeah. Because so. I was like, wait, am I looking at the right thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, he was fresh on my mind just from, you know, the everything that's happening in LA right now. But I was like, did I just <laughs> did I just think him into this? Like I was kind of confused to see him there. So I'll I'll be interested to see his part next week but just another thought of like Issa meeting up with Molly Issa seems she's so she seems so like bubbly and like hey mm-hmm. versus when Molly walked up she looked like I barely have time for this meeting like <laughs> she just seems so like annoyed before she even started talking <laughs> right yeah and, and and then even in the preview itself she still has the attitude of I ain't wrong. So clearly this is before mm-hmm. whatever therapy appointment she set up <laughs> with Dr. Rhonda. Because <laughs> if she had seen right. somebody about this 
issues that she had, she would have came in there with a different tone. But um, mm-hmm. and how you getting um deed down by Andrew so so amazingly and still got so much attitude? Like that should have just like pumped that right out of you. Right. Yeah. Maybe she her seeing like Nathan hearing is birds a, chirping and stuff. right is a regular <laughs> reminder of Issa, and she just can't shake it. Who knows? Um, or maybe she's the problem, and <laughs> you, you can't <laughs> like escape. Right, you can't escape the problem when you the problem. When the call is coming from inside the house, you can't <laughs> you can't blame it on anybody else. But you know what? The other thing just to mention about this week is that, like I said, I was like smiling this whole episode. Like I was, in, I was so happy. And then I saw the preview and I'm like, I ne- I like immediately went into like eye roll mode. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the difference in a Molly episode and a non Molly episode. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and people are prepared to tear her apart, and I am one of those people who are prepared. Uh, I know you are. <laughs> uh, but you brought up another good point. Shout out to Kendrick Sampson, who was protesting uh, this past weekend in L.A. and got shot uh, several times by rubber bullets. Um, mm-hmm. And hit with the billy club. Yeah. And he was protecting the women around him, just trying to make sure that they didn't get shot, because I don't know if anybody's seen the picture of the older lady that got here in La Mesa in California who got shot in the face with a rubber bullet. Um, that's been circulating around here at least. Yeah. It seems like they've been very intentional about shooting people uh, in their face or trying to leave some kind of lasting injury from it. Mark, mm-hmm. um, A good friend of mine was also at the protest in LA and he was shot on the side of his face. It kind of busted open mm. his cheek. So he's mm. dealing with that uh, now. So, yeah, yeah, it's definitely please be safe out there if you're protesting. Um, mm-hmm. You know, no matter how peaceful you are, there are people out there who are trying to paint you in another light um, and are ready to to look at you differently. So please try to be safe um, mm-hmm. while expressing your disdain with how America is handling itself. So, uh, we appreciate you. I yes. would chime in just to say I definitely appreciate you guys too. So Absolutely. me and my babies, my son, my he's only five, but my you know how how cute is he until he's just not cute anymore, right? So I think about that all the time, and so I definitely appreciate everybody out there. Yes. Absolutely. Um, on that note, thank you guys for tuning in with us for another recap of Insecure. If you like what you've heard. Uh, we appreciate you and would love it if you subscribed, if you haven't already done so. If you've already done that, uh, I got a cookie in the mail on its way to you. <laughs> Things are being delayed because of COVID and the protest right now, but it's on its way. Um, Lies. <laughs> uh, if you want to earn another cookie, leave a review for us. It's definitely appreciated. Appreciate it. Of course, if you have something that you want to say, something that we did not discuss, you can hit us up. Uh, on Instagram or Twitter at Ungentrified Pod. You can listen to past episodes at ungentrifiedpodcast.com or wherever you may enjoy podcasts. And uh, enjoy it because you only got two more episodes with us before we are gone until next time. So uh, <laughs> until then, uh, stay strong, stay safe, wear a mask, social distance. Please. Right. Yes. <laughs> uh, make sure your voice is heard, stay informed. Uh, vote if your precinct is uh, voting right now, uh, whether it's by mail, early voting, or day of. Make sure you get out there and do all parts of making sure that your voice is heard. Until next time, peace out. <laughs>